People went outside and stopped in wonder. Some gooey stuff was covering the ground. Whitish, gelatinous blobs had turned the outside world into a scene out of a creepy sci-fi movie. This mystery evoked lots of discussion, and experts offered different theories. But it turned out that the situation was even worse than previously thought. The blobs reportedly made the people who came into contact with them sick. But let's start from the very beginning. It was the summer of 1994 in the timber town of Oakville when gelatinous blobs were found on the ground. People thought they had rained from the sky because where else could they have come from? This find caused panic and confusion among the residents of the area. But actually, it was just the first appearance of this gooey substance. Flecks of goo, which were actually smaller than a grain of rice, fell down from the sky several times. The volume was very high, and when they accumulated on the ground and shed roofs, they became visible. Around 10 days after the first occurrence, a newspaper wrote an article about the blobs. Other than that, there seemed to be no other confirmed and official reports about this mysterious substance. Until a National Weather Service employee in the area got a call from an unidentified man in August. The man claimed that some hot, metallic particles falling from the sky had burned holes in his kid's trampoline. Apparently, it was time to examine the Oakville blobs. A hospital reportedly looked at them under a microscope and made a terrifying discovery. The researchers stated that the substance contained human white cells. This encouraged some people to suppose that the blobs were probably concentrated fluid waste from an airplane toilet. This theory was debunked after a spokesperson of the Federal Aviation Administration explained that toilet fluids were usually dyed blue, which gave them the nickname Blue Ice. Another theory trying to explain the Oakville blobs suggested they had something to do with jellyfish. Some experts agree that this idea was plausible. Something the size of portions of jellyfish could have been pulled up into the atmosphere and moved to another location during a storm. After all, raining animals is nothing new, but we'll speak about that later. At the same time, six events of the Oakville blobs raining down from the sky were reported, which made it hard to imagine jellyfish particles floating around in the sky for so long. On the 20th of August, 1994, the New York Times reported that the mysterious gooey substance had once been alive. This article followed an analysis made by the Washington State Department of Ecology. The scientists who had tested the blobs announced that they had found out that the substance contained a number of cells of different sizes. Interestingly, those results brought an end to the human white cell theory since it turned out that the cells didn't have any nuclei. But that's something you definitely see in human white cells and jellyfish as well. These creatures are multicellular organisms whose cells contain nuclei. But what kind of life wouldn't have nuclei? For example, bacteria and some other microorganisms similar to them. An expert working on this mystery said that the blobs had no clearly visible structure, and it didn't appear even when they used a microscope. In the end, the researchers concluded that the substance contained two types of bacteria, both found in the digestive tracts of humans and other mammals. They were also often found when waste was deposited. These bacteria could travel in the water and through the air. The goo could be some kind of a carrier system. Unfortunately, the scientists admitted that they didn't have any hard evidence to support their idea. To add to the mystery, the samples reportedly went missing before the researchers could finish their work. But is it true that the weird blobs made people sick? At first sight, yes. A few Oakville residents reported becoming ill and experiencing similar flu-like symptoms after touching the Oakville blobs. But was it a direct consequence? No one knows. Experts admit that the cases of illness could have been a coincidence, which makes the incident even more intriguing. So far, the mystery remains unsolved. Now let's move on to the other stuff falling from the sky. Bad news, some of it can be totally disgusting. Like worms falling from the sky in China and wiggling on people's cars. Some people thought it was an animal rain, while others were not convinced. 
They stated that the video was fake since the worms were only on vehicles, but not on the ground. Others were sure worm rains were a totally normal thing in March. Ugh, luckily, not where I live. But the most shocking thing? Bizarre worm rains happened in the British Isles too. For example, in Scotland, kids were playing soccer when worms started raining down. The reason could be a substantial weather change, or who knows what. But the cases of animal rain actually started long ago. In 1877, an unusual tornado hit a farm in Southern California, bringing along several tiny alligators about one foot in length. In 1894, a tornado moved through England, dropping poisonous jellyfish on people's heads. Even though some witnesses claimed those were not jellyfish, but tadpoles, the incident was still extremely strange. In 1876 in Kentucky, black humor rain was recorded. That was when chunks of meat fell from the sky. Now, let me tell you, if you're squeamish, you might want to skip this part. Okay, I've warned you. Locals claimed the meat tasted like mutton, but later, Researchers discovered that buzzards flying over the area must have felt unwell and regurgitated their meal right in the air. Ew, told ya. All these are instances of the animal rain, a rare meteorological phenomenon in which flightless animals fall from the sky. Such cases have been reported throughout history, starting from 1794 when French soldiers saw toads fall to the ground during heavy rain near the French city of Lille. How do such rains occur? It might be different for different species. For example, frogs and toads often roam the countryside in large numbers. Powerful winds can pick them up and carry them for great distances. Or let's take fish. In 1861, there was a reported rain of fish in Singapore. And a naturalist speculated at that time a migration of walking catfish could be taking place. So the wind might have dragged them over land from one puddle to another, as if they had been following the rain. In any case, the most common explanation of such cases is that there is no actual falling at all. Animals are just driven along by winds or something of the kind. This can also explain why typically only one single species of animal is reported raining from the sky. Another probable explanation involves tornado water spouts. Those are tornadoes forming over the water. A tornadic water spout can potentially transport animals to relatively high altitudes and carry them to remote locations. This idea is supported by the suggestion that animal rains are often preceded by storms. At the same time, this theory doesn't explain why each incident involves just one species, not a group of similarly sized animals from the same habitat. Here are some other examples of animal rains. In 1947, fish started falling to the ground in Louisiana. And in 2005, it rained frogs in Serbia. In 2010, a small town in Australia experienced a rain of perches. These occurrences were most likely caused by tornadoes lifting things from the ground and water and depositing them in totally different areas. Sometimes, even iguanas might fall onto your head. When it's really cold, they go into hibernation mode to survive. But even though they might look frozen, they're still alive. When it gets warmer, they start moving again. But unfortunately, while in that chilled state, they might fall down from trees, which is dangerous both for the animals themselves and for passers-by. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.